Next item this time it is the May 2018 Community Recovery and Resilience Grants CRRG projects. And there's a recommendation on page 191. Would anyone like to move it? Councillor Grace? I'm happy to move it. It's yes. moved by Councillor Cordover, seconded by Councillor Grace. Councillor Cordover. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, Mayor, and uh, I commend this report. What we're looking at here, the purpose of this report is to summarise the result of three community recovery and resilience grant funded projects. And those are the Whitewater Creek Flood Study, the Kingston CBD Catchment Resilience Program and Blackman's Bay Catchment Resilience Program. And to seek Council's endorsement for a number of recommendations made in these reports, which are quite extensive. Um, there was a 400 page or so um, attachment with this report, um, which I guess had a great deal of specificity and detail, um, some of which was beyond my uh, technical understanding in terms of the relative risks and um, potential remedies for um, flood studies. But importantly, I guess the main thing to understand is this concept of AEP, which is the um, exceedance um, I forget what it actually stands for now, but so an AEP storm event, like for example, a 1% AEP storm event would be a 1% chance of that exceedance probability happening in a particular year. So where we used to refer to a one in a hundred year flood, we're now talking about a 1% AEP event. And um, there's a great deal of uh, detail in the report, which is very important, but ultimately the, the results indicate that the flood risk in Blackman's Bay arise from um, overland flow flooding at several locations, and that there are six main flooding hotspots within the catchment where structural mitigation options have been assessed. Uh, it goes on to talk about how all hotspots except for Illawarra Road experience some flooding, some level of flooding during a 5% AEP storm events, so that's a one in a 20 year uh, incidents of flooding, although the flood hazard is generally low. Um, overall, I would I would say that the recommendations contained herein are very important, and that when it comes to natural disaster mitigation and preparedness, the one thing of which we can be sure is that the more we turn our attention to it now, the the cheaper it will be in the long run, but also fundamentally the, the less harm that there will be to our community. We know that we live in a municipality which is prone to various natural disasters. Uh, we have seen them and we've lived through them and we've suffered through them, but we've also learned from them. And I think this report, uh, one of the reasons why it is so important is it uh, reflects that we are constantly learning, discovering new information and then making that transparent um, to our municipality so that everyone can prepare as best they can. And they can also take assurance from the fact that our council uh, has the best interests of the community safety at heart. So I want to particularly thank Mr Aronson for um, preparing this report and the authoriser as well. And I commend the report to the council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. We have Councillor Cordova with a question. Thank you, Mayor. It was remiss of me not to ask Mr Aronson uh, to help me summarise the report. So my question is, are there any additional uh, points that uh, Mr Aronson would like to put a spotlight on for us? Very large report. And uh, so, Mr Aronson, do you have, did you miss anything? Thank you, Mayor, through your Mayor. Well, trying to be brief, um, I think all three reports, they are sort of a first assessment to identify the flood risk and flood hazards within these catchments. And we've gone beyond just identifying the flood risk to also, on a pre preliminary stage, identify what potential mitigation options are available for council. And that's not just structural, but also non-structural ones, which could be uh, strategies, uh, planning processes, um, emergency manage management, education and the likes. And um, we've gone through all those available mitigation options and then also done a multi-criteria assessment to so that council have um, a catchment resilience program for Kingston CBD and Blackman's Bay where we can see where should we start, uh, what is the most uh, reasonable mitigation measure to start working with and hopefully implement to build a more resilient um, 
community against flooding. Did that answer your question? Councillor Cordova is nodding. Excellent, thank you. To summarise, Councillor Cordova. Thank you very much, Mayor. We have indeed, I think, struck the, the number of the issue, and I want to thank once again Mr Aronson for um, that terrific summary. What we have here is identifying the risk and identifying some of the options that we have before us, but significantly we are delineating between structural and non-structural risks and therefore structural and non-structural interventions. And so to draw an analogy, I guess, from what I've heard is, you know, I'm looking now on page 189 and it says here for Blackman's Bay, the results indicate that the structural mitigation assessment is preliminary only and requires further investigation to address all potential impacts such as amenity and environmental impacts, but a, prelim a preliminary and indicative cost of $560,000 has been identified for the construction of all three levies. So that's an example of a structural intervention, but there's other non-structural interventions, so changing planning, and that's what Mr Aronson hit upon. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to summarise now, is that an analogy would be 98% of Kingborough is bushfire prone. So we've got the option of saying everyone should build a fire bunker with its concomitant costs, or we've got the option of saying, well, here's a risk, get prepared, know your risk, let us help you to act when you need to and to be ready to act in the case of an emergency. So um, by identifying both the structural and the non-structural mitigation uh, uh, elements, um, that's what is the power of this report. And um, I commend it to the council and thanks once again to the author. Thanks, Councillor Cordova. Uh, just for the record, you're skating very thin ice with the new material rule there. Uh, to keep an eye on that one. Councillor no Cordova moved and Councillor Grace uh, seconded. And the motion is quite in depth, actually. So I'm going to bring it up on my other screen and try and figure out how I can summarise it. Uh, the recommendation is the council A, engage with the community about the results of this study, B, incorporate the 1% AEP storm event for year 2100, flood maps for the catchment developed in this study, C, develop a waterway maintenance plan, D, further investigate and where appropriate implement other non-structural measures, and E, further investigate the proposed flood protection levies along Whitewater Creek as a preferred potential structural mitigation option. There are uh, also points for Kingston CBD and Blackman's Bay as printed. So I'm now going to ask you to unmute your microphones and prepare for the vote. Councillor Westwood, if, if you agree with motion, please say yes. If you disagree, please say no. Councillor Westwood. Yes. Yeah. Councillor Bastone. Yes. Councillor Cordova. Yes. Councillor Fox. Aye. Yes. <laughs> Good. Councillor Grace. Yep. Yep. Councillor Mitchell. Yes. Councillor Street. Yes. Councillor Was. Yes. And Councillor Reit. He's probably going to use the chat bar. Councillor Reid, that is actually texted me the word yes. Uh, now she's got it in the, in the chat bar. Excellent. We're we're going well tonight. Okay. Uh, so the motion is carried unanimously. Uh, the next item is the confirmation of items to be dealt with in closed session. 